I'll call this meeting of the Christiansburg Town Council to order. Uh, as we have been doing for several years, we will take a moment of reflection, uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you would like to join us in this moment of reflection, please feel free to do so. Thank you. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And I would like to ask uh, Councilwoman Marissa Sachs if you would lead us in the pledge. Sure. I, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any adjustments uh, to the agenda? Hearing none, we will move on. We have three public hearings tonight. The first is a conditional use permit request by Safe Haven Family Services, Inc., agent for Quorum Holding Corporation for a single-family residential dwelling at 2175 Palmer Street, Northeast, tax map number 466-A-17 in the B3 General Business Zoning District. The property is designated as business commercial for the future land use map of 2013 Christiansburg Comprehensive Plan. Is there anyone here to address this issue? Yes, sir. If you'll give us your name and address and podiums over there. <laughs> Uh, my understanding in 2002, this particular property was already licensed and approved by the city to have a uh, group home there. All I'm doing is re, re basically bringing up this issue again, hoping since it had been transferred over to several different businesses, it can be transferred back to a dwelling for um, a group home and, and to support the. Uh, Intellectual and uh, disabled individuals. Uh, we offer a variety of different services. This is ideal for um, this type of business with the rec center right across the street. There are uh, doctors right down the street from Carillion Doctors, the um, Aquatic Center. It's just very central located, and I think it would be it would do well there at, at that location. All right. Thank you. Any any questions for Stephen? No, I, I have a crib. He says it's going to be a group home. Yes. How many persons do you think will be staying there at one time? No more than, than four. We're licensed for four maximum. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, second is a public hearing on the water sewer rate increase to fiscal year 2018 2019. I believe we have advertised an increase of one dollar <coughs> per thousand gallons. Correct. Okay. Is there anyone here to address that? Hearing no one, I will close that portion of the public hearing. The annual budget fiscal year 2018-2019. Uh, Brandy, you want to give us a synopsis or are we just uh, open for questions? <laughs> Uh, basically, it is balanced budget. Uh, we are proposing no tax increase. Of course, it does include the water and sewer increases, includes the uh, recycling changes. Uh, we are adding a new bus service uh, route as a trial route, pilot route, uh, Roanoke and Radford route. Uh, uh, insurance changes, paying portion of family insurance for town employees. Th those are some of the major changes. Okay. Anyone here to address this issue? Hearing none, I'll close the uh, public hearing section. We'll move to consent agenda. Under the agenda, there are council meeting minutes of May 28th, May 8th, 2018, and May 16th, 2018. The monthly bills, a contract with Cardinal for facilities assessment services, 
at a contract with ABS Technology for data backup and recovery. Can I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as it is? Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, I'll, I'll add that uh, an email from Ms. Sachs is going to comment on that, or are you going to comment on it? Um, I can. We're in yeah. discussion. Well, okay. I'm going to say that I, uh, I'm going to vote for the, I'm going to vote to pay the bills, but I think you make a very good point. And after your explanation, I hope that, uh, hope that we'll look further into this. So, mm -hmm. um, just to address everybody who may or may not have gotten the email, um, I, I did review the bills, and I did notice that an awful lot of our funding is going outside of the town and outside of our county. I feel we can do a much better job with that, and I'd like to open up discussions at some point in the near future concerning that. The vendors have already provided services, so I agree that they need to be paid. So I, I don't feel like I can deny that. But going forward, I feel like we can be a little bit more fiscally responsible to support local. And one of the reasons behind that is also it's, it's the business community that does pay a lot of our taxes, which makes a lot of our revenue for the town, which is part of our budget. And if we spend money outside of our county, that money isn't coming back to our budget. You know, the, the vendors in Rhode Island and the vendors in Maryland, they don't pay for football programs. They don't support mom and dad being hired. And, and so on and so on. So I feel like we need to be a little bit more responsible in our procurement to keep more money local. And so I'd like to open that up and discuss it further and perhaps make a few improvements on that. So thank you. And she eloquently, I'll follow up with one brief comment. She eloquently followed up. It's obvious that uh, her, her comments could be, appear to be self-serving because she is a local business owner. But during my last campaign cycle, I heard this a lot. Of why? Would it, just make sure that our system is fair, our purchasing system is fair, but that we also are really, uh, for smaller type stuff especially, we should be making use of our, our local businesses to the extent that, uh, you know, to the extent that we can. But I want to speak on your behalf, I'm not getting to know you, but your comments could appear to be self-serving, but I don't take them that way because of what I've heard uh, from the community. We should be buying as local as we can and supporting our local businesses because that money is is rippling through our own economy. That's right. Okay. You know, I would agree with that too. Uh, I also ran last fall and, and um, you know, that's really one of the things that's on people's mind is, is trying to work with people within the community and support different operations within the community. And I think your point's really well made, and, and I'm glad you brought it up. Thank you. Well, I agree with it, but what's the next process for that, Randy? Okay. Um, if you are to do business with Ms. Sachs because she's on council, there's really only two ways we could do business with her company, and, and that's, that's specific to her business. If you're talking to businesses in general. In general. In general. Yeah. I, I mean, um, I'm, I'm taking myself off the table because I don't want any conflict. What my comments are strictly for is for all the businesses in Christiansburg. And then if Christiansburg can't suffice, keep it Montgomery County. And if Montgomery County can't suffice, then of course, outside. And we are kind of, I guess, a little bit, I guess, hamstrung by Virginia procurement law. If it is a small purchase, then we could do it by three, basically three bids and taking the low bid. But we'd be tied to taking the low bid. We couldn't necessarily dictate whether it's a local firm or not. Um, I, I don't think we can vary from that. If it is a you know, request for a proposal for professional service, then you're tied to selecting the most qualified candidate for the, the work. So then basically it's strictly qualifications that you're supposed to consider. So like I say, to, to some degree we're hamstrung by Virginia state law as to who we do business with. Typically, we're basically steered to doing things with low bidder if it's a small purchase. Well, that's, that's, my comments were to the extent practicable. I yes. mean, we should look 
local if we can, and, and I understand the, the state laws, especially for professional services. But the idea is, you know, as far as can, internal policies that we try to make sure we always have at least one local bid or, or something like that, I think we can always try to do that. I think we do try to do that. Um, you know, like I say, I think those type things we can try to do, kind of to help out local businesses. But uh, of course, we do have to follow Virginia procurement law. That we, we don't really have any options in that regard. What is the threshold for the three bids? Is there a dollar, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand? I believe it's ten thousand. Ten thousand. I think so. up to. It's just a quote, three quotes. Yeah, mm -hmm. it goes all Everything the way up. that we go. The more formal process. Yeah, it goes all the way up to a hundred thousand. Yeah. But there's varying le there's different levels of how many quotes that you need to get. Mm -hmm. I think something that might be very helpful is maybe as part of the maybe if someone wants the Chamber of Commerce I don't think we get a, how many responses do we actually get from local businesses when we advertise? Because that it may be a lack of just not having the people actually respond <coughs> to the solicitations. There could be all kinds of yeah. One thing we could do is uh, with our business license renewal, we could include a mailer or, or something, or maybe when they come in to renew their business license, give them a sheet, basically just telling them our procurement policies and also maybe point out on our website that our bids are posted on our website. I'm sure probably a few <coughs> local businesses might not necessarily know that. Well, they can register for the notify me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. I think it's something that we definitely could work on, whether it's communication, marketing, or a change of what we even do, it would be very helpful. If, if we're buying hammers or flowers or whatever, lawnmower blades or whatever we're buying, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to be a big point of discussion, but I think it's a good point, and I would like to be able to look at our local business owners and say we're doing everything we can help you, you possibly do to help you succeed on a level playing field. Well, but when I say level playing field, we should look local first if we can, when we can. And if people don't respond, at least we're, we're doing what we can do. Very good. Any further discussions? I, I, I will say that what I would hope that we consider in the very near, near future uh, is that we need to come up with a set of purchasing rules for departmental shirts, whatever we need to make sure we have a I think we need a standard this is what kind of shirt you can buy for every whatever your department is whether it be a 32 count a 96 count thread count whatever we need to be consistent so that when we do if we do and when we do put these things out to bid then you know we're comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges it could be the thread count of the T-shirts. It could be any one of a thousand things. That, but I think that, you know, I, I had almost decided tonight that I would suggest we just issue uh, a temporary ban on order, ordering any kind of logo shirts for any of our departments. But I don't think I want to go that far yet. I think uh, Randy has talked to me, and I think we are, we discussed this earlier that he has a he's getting a procurement contract, uh, one such as in place at Virginia Tech and I think it is pretty apparently it is pretty widespread and pretty pretty inclusive of this this and this and it may be something we need to take a look at for down the road because I see any number of different style of, of logos within the various departments with the exception of public works because we do provide those uniforms as part of the, as part of the package so but anyway it's something that we can consider <coughs> Uh, I think as soon as Randy can get that information, and maybe we can we can get it out and review it uh, to council, then maybe we can sit down and, and make a more a more educated uh, directive of what we feel like we would like to do. So, is this something that the finance committee would want? Would that fit our to review? <laughs> It's the mayor's discretion. I don't want to throw work session and get the grumbles coming from here, but I, I would like to find out more about it. I had thought maybe after we take a look at it and have a chance to discuss it, maybe to put a committee together of, of council, not necessarily finance, but possibly finance, and the department heads, the ones that are normally buying most of those things, 
just to review. And so this is what we're looking at. This is what we feel that you need to go to. And carry it from there see what comes up. So uh, thank you, Marissa. I, I appreciate that your, your comments on this. Uh, ask one. If, can you two work together? I know you got a lot on your plate um, to just get something out to us, sort of to... I mean, you explained some uh, procurement laws to Virginia tonight and at least get us moving. So if we do want to make a work session here in the next few months, we can do that. And I, I think it's something council can sit down and decide and give you a direction as long as it's legal. Yeah, the only thing in the Virginia Code, there's a, um, by Virginia, a preference if there's like a tie for bids and stuff. But you're pretty much, you know, anything over $100,000 for... Um, you know, regular services and uh, goods, you know, has to go by strictly by the Virginia Public Procurement Act. You have small purchase under that. And anything that's over, what is it, 80 or 60, I think it's raised to 80 now, the, on the professional services has to go through, you know, <coughs> the full-blown um, RFP process. And so when you advertise those things, you get advertisements from all over the, all over the place. And you have to pick the best value with the city, mm. so it really comes down to qualifications and and you know price and that sort of thing. Right. So you're kind of like stuck. But on the small purchase procedure, then we, we might be able to do something on that end. And I'll take a look and see what other localities may have. I think, regardless, I think once we get this procurement thing, and possibly it might be a the possibilities of a good work session to sit down with Kim Widrick, who is our basically our purchasing agent, to let her explain. I know that she had a meeting with some of the merchants in town and explained all of this to him. But I think it would be good for town to, for the council mm -hmm. to have a an idea. Of this is this is what we do. This is how we do it, and this is when we do this. So uh, maybe that's something we don't have to schedule in the next couple of weeks but uh, something in the in the near future once we can all digest this document that Randy has requested that we receive so I think maybe that could do so are there any other questions or comments then uh, I have a motion and a second madam clerk would you poll council yes sir councilman Bishop Aye. councilman Huppert Aye. councilwoman Sachs Aye. councilman Showalter Aye. councilman Stipes Aye. that is six oh thank you this is a citizen's portion, a uh, citizen's comment portion of the agenda. If you do what? Five. Oh, that's right. Harry's not here. Bless old Harry's heart. Okay. Uh, he would have probably voted for <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I don't have to ever see him vote against him, but anyway, we'll do five oh and, and one absent. Uh, this is a citizen's comments portion where if you would like to address council on any matter uh, of concern, we ask that you come to the podium, give us your name and address. You, uh, if you would address your comments to the chair, and you have three minutes. Is there anyone here that would like to address council? My name is Bob Leonard. I live in uh, Blacksburg, 305 Bishop Road in Blacksburg. I chair the uh, board of directors of Christiansburg Institute Incorporated, and I speak on behalf of that board tonight to make a statement that is jointly endorsed by both Christiansburg Institute Alumni Association and the CIE. We thank Town Council for your time and effort in considering community applications. A lot goes into preparing the applications on our end, and I know that a lot goes into thoughtful de deliberations on yours. We recognize the importance of building a healthy and professional re working relationship between CIE in the town of Christiansburg. Our goal is to foster transparent processes of communication, structures of accountability, and to build bridges of mutual understanding around shared goals and vision. In honoring our shared commitment to truth-telling, we find it necessary and appropriate to provide context and clarity regarding several inaccurate and or misinformed statements made about our organization's financial history and how we've used funding from the town of Christiansburg in the past. The town's grant application process for external agencies requires submission of a complete application packet to the town's director of finance. 
included in the application packet or documents that fully disclose how previous town money was spent and how town money will be spent in the current grant request. Documentation of our organization's use of town funds is readily available in each and all of our previous application packets. Per request of town council members, we've also submitted spreadsheets that clearly substantiate the application documents. For the record, the town of Christiansburg has funded CI Inc. for eight years, from 2007-8 through 2014-15 at $10,000 per fiscal year. We've used this money for two specific purposes, as was stated clearly in each year's application packet. For the first seven years, we've received support for operational program costs. The eighth year, we received uh, support for contracting with professional consultants. We are a small volunteer-based organization. We have had to focus on building our organizational capacity over many years. Key to our growth and reputation is a profound commitment to honest, transparent communication with everyone. We aspire to ambitious re revitalization of our property on Spatterfoot Drive, the Air Gray Long Builder. This is a long-term project. It is our strategy for this long-term endeavor to anchor ourselves in delivering worthwhile public programs every year, reliably building respect, allies, and our reputation. This is our annual program for which we have consist consistently requested general operating support from the town and other funding sources. Over the years, we have proven ourselves to be prudent in budget management, doing exactly what we say we will do within our available resources. In the eighth year of funding, we received town support for contracting with a professional consultant who aided us in developing clear strategies for advancing our long-term goal to revitalize the Air Grant Long Building through community partnerships. This year's application is based on this vision and its commitment to partnership with the town. Should we be funded, we look forward to forming a formal authority with the town and other invested partners in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Anyone else here to address council? Citizens. Hearing no one, I will close citizens' uh, comments under introductions and presentations. April Kelly to present regarding Relay for Life. It's April. Coming to us in May. Hi, uh, my name is April Kelly, and I am the staff partner for the uh, American Cancer Society and the Relay for Life of Montgomery County. Um, I have two volunteers here with me today that live here in, in Montgomery, um, that, uh, Pat Worrell and Donna Christian. And we are just kind of here today to make sure that not only are we using our donor dollars properly to serve the community up here, but making sure that we're doing everything possible um, to do everything correctly for the, for the town of Christiansburg. Um, the Relay for Life um, is one of the biggest fundraisers that the American Cancer Society does have. Um, we have um, 52 counties that do a Relay for Life and over 50 countries that do a Relay for Life to serve cancer patients and to raise money for research to end cancer. We actually do have a sign and some posters if, um, if we're allowed to put that out front so we can kind of advertise for our event. Our event is next Friday on June 1st at the Christiansburg Middle School from 6 to midnight. So if you have friends, <coughs> you have to come out and join us and continue this fight. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, no, this is, is David Moore here tonight to... Uh, yes, yes, yep. There's David. You snuck in on me. Uh, regarding Christopher Community Center. To Mayor Barber, to the town council, to Mr. Wingo and staff, good evening. Now I'm here to present um, the Oak Hill School Community Center to show you what we have been spending your money on, the act is more of The Christianburg Community Center is a 125-year copy molded in that Christianburg landmark. For those of you who don't know, it's on 570 High Street, right next to Shaker Memorial Baptist Church. It is going to be renamed as the Old Hill School Community Skid Center. That's what everybody calls it anyway. So we applied with the state. And they said, okay, we'll go ahead and change your name. So we just going to be known as the Old Hill School Community Center. 
Our building is still in desperate need of repair. So we still got a lot of work to do. So you all know that our first party was it was leaking very bad. Actually raining inside the building. And that's where it looked, looked bad. It looked really bad. So through your help, this is what we have now. And we have a nice roof. It is dry inside. Now we can go inside and start building. So we thank you all for helping us get that built. This was our main meeting room before we did the renovation. This is the main room that everybody comes in and have meetings in. This is what it looks like now. We took the roof back to its uh, original height. You see the windows are no longer covered. So they're back to the original height. We put wood on the roof. We got new lighting. We got fans. We even exposed these beams, which has a nice architectural feature at the top to be able to come and take a look at it. So it's a really nice looking room there. It's a feature of the building. And that's another look at it with the lights on. You can see how nice this room looks. It looks really good. And that's what we did last year. We came in here last year. We did that. But like we said, we still have work to do. We still want to replace these windows, refurbish these windows, not replace. Refurbish these windows. So we know that doing the windows will be a long-term project. It's not something that's going to happen in one year. We have 34 windows in this building, and we have an estimate that's going to cost $123,000 to get this done. We know we're not going to get all 34 of them done at one time. It's probably going to be a two-year kind of thing if we get them all done. So we know that's going to happen. That's past going to happen. Unless we get a rich uncle come by somewhere. <laughs> Something we want to do this year, this is a room upstairs. This could be a future meeting room. It should not take a lot to get this room into good shape. It's got some water damage up top. The carpet needs to be replaced. It's got some work on the windows that needs to be done. All the ceiling tiles needs to be done. We move. And one of the big headaches for replacing ceiling tiles in this building is when they redid the building before and lowered the ceiling, they blow insulation on top of the ceiling tile. So when you take the ceiling towel out, all that insulation comes with it. So we have to take the ceiling towel out, all the bone insulation out, put in new insulation, put in new ceiling towel. So that's the biggest job in this room. But we're going to try to get that done this year if we can. This is another one of our rooms. It's going to take a lot more work. You see the water damage from the roof in the past years and how it's caused a lot of trouble. So, and this is meeting room number three. These ceiling tiles over here are actually missing from the water damage, and it's really, really bad shape. The kitchen needs work. It's dated. It's got stains on the table, got stains on the counters, and it just looks unpleasant. You don't want to go in there and cook. So we want to upgrade it so people will want to go in there and use it. Our restrooms need to be hand handicap accessible. It's kind of easy for me and you to get in there, but if somebody comes up here who's in a wheelchair, they're not going to get in there. And that's something we really need to get done. Right now, with the roof and the meeting room, we're about 20% of where we want to be. We still have a way, long way to go, but with your help, we will get there. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you, David. I will say that uh, I have been to a couple of functions in the new the new classroom number one and it's uh, I've been in it both times and it's it's really quite an improvement quite an improvement Marissa I think you were there were you there in that one recently yeah I was in the basement though okay which was scary <laughs> yeah. that's where yeah. the kitchen yeah. is right yeah, yeah. 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 that's what you do there also yeah. <laughs> I would agree with that <laughs> But, it, yeah. but, but it is, we have very evidence of the money well spent so far. Yeah. Thank have, you, have you got any plans for any fundraising coming up in the near future? $100,000 type fundraising we do not have yet. Uh, even even a small thing? Uh, uh, oh, small things. We do our Gospel Fest every year. We just finished that up in May. Okay. And that helps us out. Uh, and we're thinking about having a place for a community play have people come to it. So we're working on some things. Okay. And so I, it's my understanding that this building, once it's completed or whatever, it will be open to the public to, Almost to use, correct? Almost definitely. That main meeting hall is open right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's 
have regular meetings in the community center, so the NAACP meets there twice a month through Tandem. Um, so the building is being used, and we will also have our heritage dinner, which is amazing. <coughs> uh, and so we'll be working on plans for the big money. Thank you, David. All right, thank you. Uh, Wayne Nelson to introduce Dr. William Naki. Mm -hmm. Dr. Naki, yes. Dr. Naki, the NRV Regional Water Authority Board member at large appointment. Wayne. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. The last Council meeting resulted in Council approving Dr. William Naki as at large representative to the new NRV Regional Water Authority Board. I know how important it is for Council to meet the newly appointed board and Council committee members, so for that reason, I apologize for being out of town at the last meeting. Being on the board during the changes that, that resulted from the joinder, one of the most significant changes that has taken place is the appointment of a Virginia Tech Civil Engineering Department professor as an at-large representative. This has proven invaluable during board meeting discussions with the technical knowledge that they bring to the meetings. When I called Dr. Naki to invite him to this meeting tonight, I expressed my pleasure that he might serve on the board. His reply to me was that he drinks our water too, and so does his grandchildren. <laughs> that really wrong with me because I think in nine days I'm going to be a granddad. His impressive resume speaks for itself. Dr. Naki has published and has received many awards. He's been on BT's uh, Virginia Tech's faculty for 39 years. He may not remember this, but he taught me water supply uh, engineering when I was a senior at, at Tech. So, Town Council, please let me introduce Dr. William Naki. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Those were very nice comments. Um, I don't have any prepared comments. I'd be happy to take any questions to that. Uh, as Wayne said, I've been here now. This is my 40th year at Virginia Tech. My technical emphasis is water and wastewater treatment. And so uh, most of my coursework that I teach every year is focused on water treatment. I, I made the comment to Brad before the meeting started that I think I've given more tours of the local water treatment plant probably than anybody at least who doesn't work there uh, because I take the class out there every semester. Uh, I also, Virginia Tech allows us to do a small amount of technical consulting on the side. So I do have worked with uh, dozens of uh, consulting firms, water utilities, big, small on, on treatment issues. Uh, that's, that's what I know. And uh, we've been, uh, I think, blessed in this area for many years to have a strong staff, strong leadership there, and I look forward to working with the board uh, going forward. Thank you. Any comments, I'd questions? I'd like to, just a brief comment. Uh, we could probably, we, the town, and the New River Valley could probably not have a more qualified individual to represent our interests and to make sure that we're making good decisions at the board level. Than Dr. Naki, and he's he's modest. He's a university dis distinguished professor who's taught many of, many of us that's gone through the mill over here, and uh, he was also department head for civil engineering for 15 years. So, and he's also a 10 handicap in golf, so he knows how to relax too. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm, when your when your name was brought to us, I couldn't think of a better qualified individual, and we appreciate your willingness to serve at this level and they help us make the right decisions for going forward with our plant and distribute our, um, as our, as our water wholesaler. Absolutely. And the quality of our water is, is about as high as it can get, is that correct? Yes, it is. One of the things that we're blessed with is a truly uh, outstanding water source in the New River. I tell my students that, unfortunately, they don't get to see a lot of high-power, <coughs> high pollutant advanced treatment processes because we don't need them to treat our source here. If we were in the tidewater area where we have much higher organic levels in the water and some other constituents, uh, we would need more advanced treatment technologies than we have to have here. We have what we need. 
it functions quite effectively. So uh, we have high, very high quality water. Thank you. Welcome on board. Yeah, thanks is for this, coming by. Now, is he a new member or is he replacing a member He's at law? He's a new member. Yes, uh, Dr. Corbin is, is leaving. Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. To continue with the Wayne uh, Nelson show, we have Wayne Nelson, engineering director, to present regarding the Cambria Trail, a potential VDOT smart scale funded project. Mr. Nelson. Localities around the state are currently completing project application for VDOT Smart Scale Funding Program. I've been asked to present the Cambria Trail Project as a potential project for this funding, which is funded at a full 100%. The source for this presentation is a trail study recently completed by Hurt and Profit, one of the town's transportation consultants. One of the eight corridors studied with recommended improvements was the trail along Cambria Street and Depot Street, which for the purposes of this presentation, <coughs> I will refer to that as the Cambrian Trail. The, the, uh, the magenta rub here is the trail that I will discuss. It extends from North Franklin Street in the Recreation Center, uh, down Cambria Street, Depot Street, connecting to Roanoke Street near Kiwanis Park. There seems to be two branches here. This was an original proposed location here at the Cambria intersection. But as part of the Smart Scale project currently under design, it was determined that a pedestrian crosswalk at this intersection would, would be detrimental to the traffic flow. So what has happened is we have proposed a new signal here which aligns with the future connector road. There will be pedestrian accommodations at that location which will allow connection to this leg right here which is, um, which is what? Central Avenue. Central Avenue. Thank you, thank you. Central Avenue will, will connect to uh, Cambria Street and extend to uh, Depot Street. Okay, thanks. This is the proposed improvements. The trail section would be typical throughout the entire project when adjacent to the street. You have a 10-foot asphalt trail, uh, curb and gutter, and you'll have a five foot um, green area, uh, buffer strip between your trail and the back of the curb. Along Cambria Street, we'll be able to reduce the lane width to 10 feet, uh, excuse me, 12 feet, uh, to reduce the need for additional right of way. Uh, the side benefit of that would be a potential traffic calming measure and also an opportunity for uh, street streetscape improvements. Uh, along Depot Street there are no planned uh, lane width reductions. The graphic on the left is typical of the improvements along uh, Cambridge Street uh, between um, up to up to Ellet Road. There's no curb and gutter. It's the soldier shoulder section, which we would add curb and gutter and the storm and storm drain and and the trail. Um, this is typical from Ellet Road to the rail crossing. We have sidewalk on both sides. The the lane widths would be reduced. We would install the trail on this west side and we would also plan to replace the curb and gutter and sidewalk on the east side because it's in a very high state of uh, deterioration. Um, I will point out that when the town replaced the bridge in Cambridge about 15 years ago 
we stub the stone drain out down here for this very reason. Cambria Street in this section has no stone drain inlets at all. So part of this project would be to extend the stone drain and, and uh, provide a, a collection system along the, along the street. This is the most challenging portion of the project here. Uh, we would need to uh, get the trail across the, the two north and southern rails uh, all the time, being cognizant of the uh, whistle band that is grandfathered for this crossing. Uh, signal modifications with a pedestrian gate would be, would be required here. Extending the trail around the Cambria toy station uh, would be another challenge. That is going to require some additional study. <coughs> Again, this is the proposed route here uh, in Cambria through the square up Depot Street. I will point out that this yellow extension is the extension from Cambria Square to the future passenger rail station to Mill Lane. Um, okay. This is typical along Depot Street. Uh, no, no lane width restriction here. We would add curb and gutter and the trail. But adjacent to the uh, Norfolk Southern uh, work yard down there, we would need to install retaining walls because of the drop off and grade here. The, the view here is, is the connection, the eventual connection to the sidewalk in, on Roanoke Street. I want to point out that uh, recently we've had discussions with Norfolk Southern's real estate <coughs> about the potential to acquire the uh, Norfolk Southern right away and near, just I think just east of Leicester Street, there's a, when you drive depot, you'll see it, there's a pullout. That's the approximate location where we would, if we were so fortunate to be able to obtain that right away, we would deviate the trail off of Depot Street and put it on this, what's now essentially an abandoned rail bed. And we would extend the trail up the old rail bed to Roanoke Street, we would cross Park Street, uh, tie into our new sidewalks there we just constructed. And, uh, and then at this location, we could then be looking at how to get the trail over to Kiwanis Park. Okay. Here's the cost summary. Uh, Cambridge Street is estimated at 2.5 million. That includes 400 Twenty thousand estimated for uh, sidewalk improvements on the on the east side of Cambria to complete that entire project. Uh, the the Depot Street extension that portion is 2.25 million. That does not include the uh, right of way needed if we were to purchase that from Norfolk Southern. The currently, um, right now, up to June 1, uh, we are inputting projects into VDOT's uh, Smart Scale Application Program. Uh, Pre-applications are due by June 1st. Uh, final applications of which four, we can apply for four projects maximum. Those are due on August 1st. Uh, our other projects that we're, that we're currently inputting is the Parkway Drive extension uh, to South Franklin Street. Uh, we previously had applied and that previous estimate was at 11.9 million. Uh, the North Franklin Street Depot Street intersection upgrade previously estimated at 2.9 million. And the North Franklin Ferry Road connector route previously estimated it just over 24 million. 
we uh, currently are working with one of our seasoned transportation uh, engineers to assist us with these smart scale applications. We have really learned a lot uh, how important it is to get it right at, at this stage. Uh, VDOT is unforgiving when you get to construction and you run out of money. It will have to come out of our own pocket. So it's uh, vital at this stage that we scope these projects well and make sure we have all, all of our costs covered in there. Amen to that. I'm ready to input this uh, at the council's, council's will into you know, the system. Uh, we, we, we plan to uh, uh, run this, uh, th these pre-applications through a preliminary hearing <coughs> just to see how we do. And uh, we're going to work harder this year than ever before to improve our score with all our projects that we submit. It is uh, quite an interesting process that DDOT has has uh, developed here. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I'd like to make a quick comment. Uh, I apologize to Mr. Wingfield and Mr. Nelson uh, for basically dumping this on you. Uh, that, uh, in my day job, uh, obviously I practice in this area and I actually help other localities. I don't do any business here in Christiansburg, but I help other localities with this very same thing. One thing I did not realize until recently was the transportation enhancement program that BDOT has had for probably 20 years. It has different names. It's called Benai Ice-T, T21, Transportation Enhancements. But the transportation enhancement program that's funded most of our Huckleberry Trail improvements so far is now being handled through the smart scale program and I did not know that uh, so it was sort of a sense of urgency that came about in the last couple of weeks because this program that I I was I was not aware that transportation enhancements was also being funneled through this smart scale program if we don't put this in it's two years till we can ask again and uh, bicycle pedestrian facilities are in vogue right now uh, VDOT loves them, people love them, so we, we have nothing to lose by putting <coughs> our, our application in for this except to be told no. The only thing we have to lose is some time, and I'll personally offer you uh, anything I can do to help you and your staff. I will do on my own time. I'd be happy to do that, uh, but I do apologize for the late notice, but it basically came about because the transportation enhancement money that's funded uh, most of our Huckleberry Trail is now being funneled through this process. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I wanted to get this, or I suggested that the town council uh, get behind this because it's 100% funding too. So um, that's a little background. I do apologize to you all and, and also help you any way I can. <laughs> Not a okay. I don't have half of uh, Brad's knowledge of this, but I was impressed when I heard you several times <clears throat> talk about funding and talking about how we're going to try to watch our money and so that we are not going to get uh, overextended you know and I, I think any all council appreciates you know that kind of an attitude uh, about these and of course this thing does look like a wonderful project you know VDOT's going through some change and we just sat through a webinar recently <coughs> and the revenue sharing program the TA program the benchmark used to be at what point are you going to advertise for construction? That was the only benchmark. That is all changed. That's that's changing that in July 1. Everything is going to be public. It's going to be on their website. There's going to be benchmarks in every way, at every step along the way, from scoping to signing contracts with your engineers. You have a schedule and it needs to be needs to be right and they will they're going to hold you your toes to the fire and i don't mind that at all i like that accountability it kind of makes your job easier in a way you know you're, you've got a carrot out there you got to hit so uh, it's interesting process and 
think some of the other state agencies could learn a thing or two, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Wayne, are you asking for the Parkway uh, and the North Franklin? There's two there, and this would be one to combine. Yeah, we uh, that this this project would be the fourth. Okay. These three, well, these three, we've already committed. To. Okay, but we need we we'd like to do one more. Yeah. That's what the request is before council is is council uh, is in favor of submitting this project also for potential funding uh, for the trail extension. All right. Sure, yeah. You don't catch any fish. You throw the hook in the water, do you? Mm -hmm. Very good. You know, I'd like to say one more thing. Um, the stream restoration that uh, your people worked on all last winter, and um, I had not been down there, and I went down there oh, about two weeks ago, and uh, if people have not had a chance to go down there, I think it was very impressive. Uh, the whole area has really changed, and it's really, the depot park and the skate park are connected, and they have done a lot of work down there. Of course, the stream has been restored, and I was just really impressed, and I, I think you guys are gonna put in another bridge, maybe to connect the uh, aquatic center, but uh, you know, in my opinion, you guys have just did a great job. And uh, and you've got trees planted, and it, it's just going to look really good, I think, in the future. And I, I for one, I, I appreciate it. I'll uh, pass that credit on to my staff. But it really did change the blighted area into a, really a destination. It's really uh, quite a transformation down there. If you haven't had a chance to, to walk that little trail, mm -hmm. it's worth it. It's nice. And Parks and Rec has done a great job with the uh, you know, playground there and the walking track around it and you know in the last 10 years that place has just so changed I remember when I first got on council that was a place where they did drugs and, and and now it is just it is just a place and you see families down there that this is a compliment I think to all these different departments of what we've made a uh, depot park you know into thank you Steve thank you Wayne, thank you Any committee reports? Where's I do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Central Business Committee met. We discussed the opportunity zones by Governor Northam and how it affects us. Um, we're still pulling some information together with Andrew's help. Um, we discussed briefly the closing of Hickok Street and how it impacts our neighbors. Um, Andrew discussed the funders forum recap, which was great. We, um, we also discussed the ongoing problem of parking, which I'd love to share a great solution, but currently there isn't a magic uh, answer for that. And then new business, we did briefly discuss the opportunity for meals abatement to help some of our local restaurants get business on days that they're normally not busy. Uh, it's a pilot program that Whitfield has started, and we're looking to see how we can integrate that, hopefully, and uh, gather more business for the local industry. We also had a uh, joint meeting between Central Business and the Street Committee. Uh, mainly the discussion with this was the closing of Hickok and how it potentially affected the neighbors, including Christiansburg Presbyterian Church. I thought we had a lot of good back and forth, made a great amount of progress. Um, we do plan to meet back up again um, May 31st, if anybody is interested, 6.30. Um, and that is the extent of the committee update that I have. Thank you. Any other committees to report? Thank you. Reappointment of Barry Helms to the uh, Montgomery Regional Solid Waste Authority <coughs> Board of Directors for a one-year term beginning July 1, 2018. Mr. Helms is here tonight. I'd be glad to answer any questions. For those that may not know Mr. Helms. So do I have a motion? So move. Second. A motion and a second to reappoint Mr. Helms. Yes. Any discussion? Thank you. Madam Clerk, five vote. Yes, sir. I'm guessing. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Huppert? Aye. Councilwoman Sachs? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. 
Thank you. Well, may, go ahead. Can I ask? Okay. The, the agenda, the flow of the agenda was adjustment of the agenda um, before the public hearings, but if, if I might, could we? I'd like to suggest we take action for Safe Haven Family Services tonight, since there was no one speaking against it. The Planning Commission unanimously supported, or they voted in favor of this conditional use permit. Um, but I didn't bring it up before because I was interested to see what the public hearing would say. If it's Councilor's pleasure, I would like to make a motion that we go ahead and take action on this tonight. So moved. Or a second. Okay. Motion and a second. Any discussion? I will say that there was no one that spoke against it at the Planning Commission public hearing either. And it was passed 8-0. Uh, Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Huppert? Aye. Councilman Sachs? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. 5 and 1 Thank and you. I likewise make a motion that we go ahead and uh, approve the conditional use permit as presented to us by the Planning Commission and supported unanimously. That's a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I'll, yeah. I've got a second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Madam Clerk? Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Huppert? Aye. Councilwoman Sachs? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. That Thank you, Mayor. Five, five. I, was, I was just getting ready to ask that question. I'm glad you did. Thank you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Any council reports? Uh, Mr. Bishop, is, uh, Mr. Collins is not with us tonight. Mr. Bishop? I don't have anything. Okay. Mr. Showalter? I do not have anything. Mr. Stipes? A brief one. I'm glad that Ms. Terry Caldwell is here. I uh, would like to thank her. Uh, for hiring such wonderful staff and I uh, told Miss Claire Mann who I'm a graduate a uh, recent graduate of the adult learn to swim class and I want to publicly tell our folks that's on watching video and uh, folks that are here that if you're scared of water or don't know how to swim or it's been 35 years like it has been in my case uh, they she has an outstanding staff and the Learn to swim program down there is fantastic. I'm still struggling with the freestyle, but I can do most everything else, and I'm uh, forever indebted. Uh, it's just a wonderful experience, but I want to make a plug for our aquatic center to staff and also to save lives by learning to swim or uh, for exercise. Obviously, weight loss is an issue of mine I need to deal with, but uh, swimming is a great way. But I want to lift you up and your staff. Uh, by specifically, I told Miss Mann I was going to make a public plug for that. So our community need to get out there and swim. And if you don't know how, we got some great people to help you learn. Thank you. That's a great program. <laughs> it's fantastic. There's a lot of people out there who are adults who can't swim. I have a lot of coworkers at that. So, Mr. Hopper, I just wanted to wish everybody having a uh, good Memorial Day weekend and make sure it's safe. And so you're here next week. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, go on the record and um, state that since our last work session, for anybody who follows it, we had some discussion on the budget, and I had an opinion concerning Christiansburg Institute. Mm -hmm. I have since been able to talk to Mr. Sanchez and um, Mr. Leonard, and we had some really good discussion back and forth, and some of the information that I use to base my decisions off of was incorrect and so I appreciate him bringing it to my attention I was able to dive into those concerns and um, it made the world a difference I did change my opinion so I do have more support for Christiansburg Institute now based on the new information and I just wanted to publicly state that change and that correction so thanks for helping me and educating me as well Thank you. Um, I will say that uh Monday night, Memorial Memorial Day, 6.30, the VFW and the American Legion uh, are sponsoring the, uh, the annual Memorial Day service at the uh, at Sunset Cemetery beginning at 6.30. Uh, if, uh, I haven't heard weather permitting, but hopefully that uh, those of you here will be able to attend. Uh, also, tomorrow night, Barry, is that the Virginia Tech thing? Barry. Barry I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Randy? Yes. Smart tomorrow. Uh, any of you going to that smart? Which one? Over Tech. 
the uh, they're kind of giving their 20-year projection on what the campus will look like and changes. Presentation of their master plan. It's, it's, it's interesting if nobody's been over to it to see what you, they've been very assertive or aggressive the past few years, and yeah. it's it's pretty neat what they they've got planned for over there. All right, so that's at six ish. Six o'clock. I know Mr. Wingfield and I are going to attend. I, I think we were all invited. Do this, okay. So, I'll, I'll get with you tomorrow. Liaison meeting in the morning mm -hmm. at uh, Marriott in Blacksburg. Is that correct? Okay. Courtyard, Courtyard Marriott. Okay. <clears throat> Very good. That's all I had. Can, uh, there is a meeting um, on well tomorrow. The first meeting of the uh, the first of two. If I'm correct, Mar Mar Melissa, is the uh, curbside recycling community meetings for the summer. There's a meeting tomorrow at 530 at the Christianburg Aquatic Center, 530 to 7 uh, for education and community input, I take it? Correct. All right. And then there's another one that will occur June 5th from 537 at here in Town Hall. So anybody who has any questions about that, definitely attend one of those meetings. It's an exciting program we're looking forward to. And thank you for putting up the signs. Those are great. <clears throat> Thank you. You ready? Sure. Okay. Request for closed meeting in accordance with Code of Virginia, <clears throat> subsection 2.2-3711, parenthesis 3, for the discussion or consideration of the acquisition of real property for a public purpose or of the disposition of publicly held real estate where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body. The closed meeting pertains to discussions regarding potential recreational property in Montgomery County, as well as potential public works property in Montgomery County. I guess that's a motion. Second. Get a motion and a second. Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop. Aye. Councilman Huppert. Aye. Councilwoman Sachs. Aye. Councilman Showalter. Aye. Councilman Stipes. Aye. That is 501, so... Uh, we're going to take about a three or four minute break to clear council chambers and I will call this meeting back to order in uh, five minutes after. <laughs> Okay. What he said, we'll read it to you later. So we are out of out of closed session. We have a motion to come out of a motion for certification. I'll motion. Got a motion. Got a second. Okay. Second. Use the second. I'll second. All right. Uh, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop. Aye. Councilman Hopper. Aye. Councilwoman Sachs. Aye. Councilman Showalter. Aye. Councilman Stipes. Aye. It's 501 and, and council is not going to take any action on any of the matters that we talked about tonight, any formal action on. Uh, I was reminded, rudely reminded, <laughs> that I skipped the town manager's report. And the only thing I've got is I was just going to ask if it's okay if I go ahead and publicize to the employees the uh, proposed employee contributions with the insurance. Are you comfortable with that? Yes, I think it should be close. You approve the budget. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it is contingent on the budget to be adopted, yeah. but we'll, we'll make well, sure that's because it always takes a while to explain those things with departmental meetings. I think we should at least get it started subject to approval. Okay. Madam Attorney? I have nothing. Any other staff? Hearing none. Is there anything else to come before council? No. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.